Hi everyone! So today we're going to be taking a look at some of my favorite all green, and I mean solid green, plants. And this video was kind of inspired by one of you guys, well several of you actually, making a comment on a recent video I did about how some of the variegated plants that I showed in that video were just like too much, right? It was too much, you guys were kind of liking more of the simplistic, you know, more all solid green plants. And so I wanted to put this video together today because a lot of people don't talk about solid green plants as much as they do variegated plants. And when I say solid all green plants that are not variegated, I mean solid all green plants that are not variegated. I did not even include plants that had like white veining on the leaves and an all green leaf. I went pure, 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 green, as pure green as I could go. So these are my favorite plants that fall into that category and they're perfect plants for those of you who like the more simplistic look or the minimalist look of plants versus all of the crazy all over the place variegation. And so the first plant I want to take a look at today that is solid green that I absolutely adore is this beautiful girl sitting right behind me. This is my Monstera Deliciosa and this is an excellent plant if you're looking for a stunning solid green unvariegated plant. Now as Monstera deliciosas mature over time, they do get more and more fenestrations in their leaves, giving them a more interesting look, at least in my opinion. And definitely these plants are gonna get big. So if you're looking for something that's gonna get big or you want a big plant just to start off because you can find these relatively large just to buy right away, this would be an excellent option for you. Just be aware it is a vining plant. You will probably need to help it by staking it up or giving it a pull at some point so that it's not just kind of flopping out all over the place, taking up all of your space, but definitely a gorgeous solid green plant. Now, if you are looking for larger plants that are solid green and unvariegated for your home, another great one, and actually anything in this genus would be great for you because most of them are solid green plants. They actually all look kind of similar to each other if I'm being honest with you, and that is Thematophyllum. So you're seeing here in my office, my Thematophyllum, I think it's called a bin Benetifidum, I believe. If that's not correct, I'll flash it up on screen for you. And these are plants that actually used to be classified as philodendron. So if you've watched any of my philodendron videos, I have mentioned before that there were upright philodendron that were considered what's called arborescent, which means tree-like. All of those philodendron were moved into the genus Thematophyllum a while back, and that's because they actually grow more like trees than they do the other philodendron. So this is one of those plants. So what does that mean? It grows kind of like a tree. Well, it's not going to vine. It's not a vining type of plant, but it does kind of develop almost like a trunk. Now, it's not a trunk like you think of like, you know, an oak tree trunk that is going to get like this big around, but it does have more of a woody trunk-like base to it that all of those beautiful leaves come off of. So this is going to get relatively large. As you can see, mine was already pretty large, but it will get larger. But just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I love the tooth shape to the leaves. And like I said, most of the Matophyllum look pretty similar. I'll see if I can find some other varieties to flash up on screen for you. But most of the ones that I have seen have that toothed leaf shape, and most of them are solid green unvariegated plants. So that's another great option to consider if you're into that more simplistic, minimalistic look. Future Drea here. So you guys, I realized when I was editing this video that I actually skipped over two plants and they are so gorgeous that I had to include them. So we are splicing them in during editing. And the first one is actually a Syngonium. This is Syngonium Styrmarchii. And I had to include this one because this is very different than most of the Syngoniums we have looked at before. And actually this plant looks a lot like the Thematophyllums that we were just looking at. Definitely has that tooth shaped leaf all green leaves, but this plant is a vining plant. So this one, as you're seeing in this picture here, is actually being trained to grow up a pole. And with these Syngoniums, that would be my recommendation because they do get so large. The leaves get very, very big. But this is an excellent alternative to those thematophyllums if you don't really have a lot of space for those since those do get more horizontally wide versus being able to grow this syngonium here up a pole and still have kind of that similar look to those thematophyllum but just an absolutely gorgeous syngonium i absolutely love it so obviously i had to splice it in here for you and the other plant that i overlooked we'll be getting to here in a bit and actually now that i think about it probably the most like i don't know maybe modern, minimalistic looking, very large plant that I can think of that I absolutely love. I don't own one because honestly, I don't have room for it, but that is the bird of paradise. These leaves are absolutely gorgeous and they tend to go pretty straight upright. So it gives it that very sculptural look, but they're giant, giant leaves. They kind of have a similar shape to the leaves of like a banana tree in my mind 
gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And then of course, if you are into plants that flower, gorgeous flowers on the bird of paradise. They look like little birds, hence why it's called the bird of paradise. And they're available in all different types of colors. My personal preference would be white if I did have space to own one. But once again, just a beautiful, beautiful, simplistic all green plant. And while we're on the topic of flowers, another excellent option that also produces flowers. And once again, I just like white flowers on plants, you guys. White and green together is kind of my like favorite simplistic combination when it comes to plants. So once again, I don't own one of these. I really don't have a good spot for them. There are dwarf varieties of these, smaller varieties that I would like to own, but actually the one I would want to own is slightly variegated. It's just my preference. But when I go to other people's houses and I see the big versions of these plants, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. I wish I had a place to put one in my home, but I don't. And those are peace lilies, AKA spathophyllum plants. Now, like I said, there are smaller varieties, but a lot of these are gonna get really, really big. But once again, they just have these beautiful glossy green leaves. They produce these beautiful flowers and they're just excellent statement pieces in your home, especially if you're looking for a bigger plant for a bigger space in your home. And of course there's also palms. Palms are another excellent, very like, you know, tropical vibe type solid green plants. There are so many varieties of palms, you guys. I'm not gonna go into all of them today. You guys are gonna get bored if I keep talking about palms for the next 30 minutes. But there are two palms in particular that I am extra partial to, and this is a list of my favorite solid green plants, just a reminder. But the parlor palm is one of them. And I will flash the other, the scientific name up on screen for you. And I see these in stores when they're small, when they're in like little six inch pots. And I just think they look super cute. They've got very tiny thin stems, these separated fronds on the palm, but they don't get crazy long on those fronds. And even when they're larger, and I will find a picture of a more mature one to flash up on screen for you, I just like the sculptural kind of minimalistic look of them. I just think they're absolutely beautiful. Now on the flip side of that, a completely slightly more quirky, but also structural in a way palm that if you've been following me for a while, you know I love, and that is the ponytail palm. Once again, I just, th this plant, first of all, it looks like it has hair, right? And so it's nice because this type of palm has more of a flowing frond versus straight fronds just sticking out all over the place. But then there's this very interesting base to it, which as I've described before, it kind of reminds me of like a lamp base sort of because it's so much narrower at the top and then it gets wider at the bottom, but just a fascinating plant. Now, most of the time when I see these, they are also relatively small, but they will get large over time. Actually, there's another person on YouTube I know that I believe a while back they did it as part of a trade, but they got a ponytail palm from a lady who had had it since 1975, I think, or 76, something like that. So they definitely can last in your home for a very long time. And definitely that one had gotten quite large. It was probably at least as tall as me. I mean, well, that's not saying much. I'm only five foot one, but still for a plant that's in your home, that's pretty big, right? But just beautiful, beautiful plants that will last over time and have that all green look to them. All right, you guys. So the second absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, all green plant that I somehow skipped over on my list while recording this video is the Anthurium Baloanum, I believe is how it is pronounced. And look at this plant. This is a stunningly gorgeous plant. I love how it's got these pleated ruffled leaves with this kind of satin texture to them. This actually kind of reminds me of some of the crawling or climbing philodendron that we've looked at in the past, but instead it is an anthurium. And it kind of looks like these leaves are just floating in the air kind of on their own because of how thin and long the petioles on this plant are. But I just think this is absolutely gorgeous, especially if you're looking for an all green plant. And as with most green plants, you can see in this picture that the new leaves do come in a slightly lighter color of green. But then of course, as they harden off, they turn into that deeper solid green color, but a stunning, stunning plant. So yet another plant that's going to get relatively large because technically it is a tree. And you guys, I'm just now realizing I didn't really intend it this way, but we are um, apparently doing all of the larger plants first and there will be smaller plants further down this list. So if you're thinking, I don't need a giant plant, we're going to get to some smaller ones ones here in a bit. But first of all, ficus elasticus. Ficus elasticus, I love my ficus elasticus, you know it. And if I was thinking about what type of ficus elastica that is all green, you know, that is my favorite. And a lot of you might be thinking I'm about to say the burgundy, but I'm not. It is actually ficus elastica sophia that came to mind when I was thinking about plants for this video. So this plant is that kind of quintessential green color. It is all green. It doesn't get any of that reddish or pinkish like 
hues to the leaves. It doesn't even have defined veining on those leaves like I believe, I think it's the Ficus Elastica Audrey that is green but has kind of that more defined lighter veining on it. So for me, this one, if I was gonna get an all green Ficus Elastica, this is the one that I would get. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Same care requirements as all your other Ficus Elasticas, but just that quintessential minimalistic simplistic green plant. And another quintessential all green plant that always comes to mind and honestly reminds me a little bit of the Monstera is the Raphidophoras, including the Raphidophora tetrasperma, which reminds me most of the Monstera. It is actually even sometimes referred to as a mini Monstera, you guys, but just be aware it is not actually part of the genus Monstera. It is part of the genus Raphidophora. I absolutely love this plant. You guys know we recently potted up a bunch of cuttings of my mama plant into one pot, so you're getting to see a little bit of update on what she's looking like right now. Totally beautiful, growing even more, absolutely happy that we planted all those together in one pot. But another type of Raphidophora that I actually really do like, but I don't currently own is, I think it's pronounced the Decursiva. If anybody knows for sure how it's pronounced out there, comment down below and let me know, but I think it's Decursiva. But this is a beautiful, beautiful Raphidophora as well. And as you can see, so also you guys, just like with the Monstera, over time, the leaves on your Raphidophora are gonna get more and more fenestrated or separated. So that's the case with this one. The leaves over time separate into these parts here that you can see, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. This one does tend to be a darker shade of green, at least in my experience, than the Tetrasperma is. So if you like that kind of slightly darker colored leaf, this would be an excellent option for you if you're looking for an absolutely gorgeous all green plant. Now, once again, these are vining plants. You can let them trail. In my experience, it has not gone well. They topple over, so that's why I now have mine on a pole. So I would recommend giving them some type of support to climb up. But once again, just a gorgeous plant. The leaves will stay smaller on these than they are gonna get on your Monsteras as well. So if you need something a little smaller leafed, but that kind of has the same look as this, definitely a great option for you. So let's talk about some alocasia next because you guys know how much I love my alocasia. And the first one we're gonna talk about is actually, I think, let me look at my list real quick. Yeah, I think this is pretty much the last like really large, potentially gonna get huge type plant that we're gonna be talking about. And that is alocasia regal shields. And I absolutely love these. And once again, I don't own one because I don't really have room for one, but an excellent floor plant if you're looking for an alocasia to be a floor plant. Now, once again, it gets pretty, pretty large. I forget exactly how tall they can get. I'll find out and I'll flash it up on screen for you. I think I remember, but I don't wanna say it wrong. So we'll put it up on screen. But once again, beautiful plant, all green petioles, and then the leaves are kind of a darker shade than the petioles. And this, once again, these leaves are a little bit darker than some of these other plants that we've been looking at. So if you like that kind of darker all green look, this would be another good one for you. But absolutely love it, super sculptural. You know, the leaves just look like giant, you know, the fans, like when they would fan people back in the day, like the pharaohs in Egypt or whatnot. That's what it makes me think of. And so I think this is an excellent, beautiful plant if you're looking for an all green plant. Now there are some more alocasias that are smaller that I absolutely adore. And once again, if you've been following me for a while, you will know I own an Alocasia Tiny Dancer. Now this is the smallest Alocasia like that I'm actually aware of. Now they can get kind of tall, but they aren't gonna get that that large at all. I think they only, I think they max out at like maybe three feet. Once again, I'll flash that up on screen for you if I'm wrong. But here's mine that you're seeing. And I just love the sculptural look of this plant. These little kind of teardrop shaped leaves that kind of have a little slight cupping to them. Just a super, super cute plant. The leaves follow the light, so the stems kind of bend and makes it look like it's dancing, hence why it's called a tiny dancer. So another fabulous option. It is like slowly becoming possibly one of my favorite or my favorite alocasias. Shh, don't tell my other alocasias I said that. But yes, absolutely love that plant. And you guys, I just realized that I didn't include on this list when I wrote it down, the alocasia that's on my wish list, which actually is gonna get relatively large. So this, this one, I didn't, Probably not quite as big. Well, yeah, probably about the same size as the Alocasia Regal Shields, but that is the Alocasia Stingray. And I absolutely love this plant. If you're new to this channel, I am very into sea life. I love snorkeling. I love spending time at the ocean. And so this plant for me is like combining my love of plants with my love of sea life by having these leaves that look like they're shaped like little stingrays. But once again, solid green very sculptural because of the shape of those leaves and I absolutely adore it. Hopefully someday I will own one, but right now it is not as high up on my wish list as some of the other plants. And so I am currently just kind of 
holding off on buying any more plants until I can get some of the ones at the top of the wish list first, but one day I will definitely own one of these. Now, if you are into trailing plants that you 100% want to be able to let trail, the next plant is an excellent option for you. And this is the Baltic Blue Pothos. I adore my Baltic Blue Pothos. I love it more and more every day. And you guys might notice, like you can't see it. For those of you who have been here for a while, you would know that it's usually hanging now on the wall behind me here. But the one vine that was hanging down super low, it looks awkward when I'm filming because it's just like this one little vine that's hanging right here and it's kind of distracting. So when I film these videos, I actually take it out of that holder on the wall just so it's not this one weird little thing hanging down. But here you're seeing it where it's normally living up there. And once again, this is a plant that will get fenestrated over time. So those leaves will remain that kind of slender shape. They will get longer and broader as well, but then they will develop fenestrations. Once again, I'll find a picture of what it looks like mature and flash it up here for you. But a beautiful, beautiful plant. Now, typically when you see them mature like this, most of these people are growing them on poles. If you let them trail, which 100% once again is fine to do with these plants. Typically the leaves will stay a little bit smaller though. And depending on how much light you have them in and whatnot, you might get more or less of those fenestrations. But if you really do want a lot of those fenestrations and bigger leaves, I would recommend growing this one up a pole. Now, another plant that I think is super sculptural and kind of modern looking, at least in my opinion, and I own a raven version of this plant, but there is an all green version as well. And that is the ZZ plant. I will flash the scientific name up on screen for you because this one's a little bit of a tongue twister for me, but I think they're absolutely gorgeous as well. If you're looking for a kind of sculpt, more sculptural, and if you have a very modern house, I just feel like this plant lends itself well to a modern, you know, kind of vibe, kind of like that bird of paradise that we looked at earlier. But this plant, I mean, what's not to like about this plant, you guys? I read a story the other day that somebody put one of these in a cabinet for like eight months and didn't water it, it had zero light, and it was still alive and they were able to like bring it back to a thriving condition after that. This plant is tough as nails in my experience. It doesn't require a lot of like fuss in terms of its care. I mean, it and it looks gorgeous. Like it produces these gorgeous long succulent type stems with these beautiful leaves. I just, I can't say enough about the ZZ plant. And once again, I own the Raven version. I just was drawn to that one more than the green one when I was looking to acquire one. But if I was looking for only solid green plants for an area or a room, this is definitely one that I would consider. And another very succulent-like plant, actually totally succulent-like, but also another great trailing plant if you're looking for trailing plants that are all green are Senecios. Well, actually they're now Curios. They've been reclassified, formerly Senecios. So you're seeing my string of bananas right here. Absolutely love this plant. And these plants are relatively easy to keep kind of maintained and don't really get like crazy large. So really you just have to trim them when they get too long. They don't have to be repotted very frequently. It's not like their leaves are gonna get bigger and bigger over time or anything like that. So if you do have space constraints and you want a trailing plant that is solid green, Definitely a great option. There's also the string of pearls. You're seeing my little baby one here. Absolutely love her. So if you don't like that banana shaped look to the leaves, if you like this more, you know, symmetrical ball like shaped, this would be a definitely a good one for you. But there's all kinds of other types of trailing senecios with different shapes to the leaves. That's pretty much the one thing that differentiates them. So definitely a great option if you're looking for that simplistic all green look in a plant. Now, ferns. I wanna talk about ferns next. I don't own any ferns. I don't really have any intention on owning any ferns. Ferns just are not for me in terms of their care requirements and whatnot, but that does not mean that I don't enjoy the look of a fern. I love it when I go to other people's houses and they have beautiful ferns. It is just not a plant that gets along well with me. That's why I don't own any, but I still have my favorites my favorite ferns. And one of the ones that I really like is called a rabbit's foot fern. So as you can see here, we've got kind of that basic fern look that you probably think of. All green though, this plant is not gonna get too, too big compared to say like, I don't know, maiden hair ferns or Boston ferns, I feel like would get much bigger than this one. So kind of a nice, cute little fern, if you will. Now, there are other ferns that are what I like to call fuzzy ferns. So for example, the asparagus fern here, as you can see, these are very fine, fine little tiny leaves on this plant that make it look super fuzzy, which is kind of fun, you know, it's different. So if you're looking for something that's all green with a little bit more of a 
textural look to it, this would definitely be a good option for you. Now, if you're looking at both of these and thinking, I don't like the look of either of those, I like, you know, broader, more solid shaped leaves, then another fern that I rather enjoy that you would probably enjoy too, that's all green, is the bird's nest fern. So as you can see here, we've got much wider, flatter, longer, not segmented leaves on this fern. And I think it's just absolutely beautiful. Once again, doesn't get too, too big. So definitely a great option if you're looking some, for something for like a smaller space in your house. But let's talk about some all green Hoyas next because there are three solid green Hoyas that are hands down my favorites. And I own two of them. One of them I don't own. I own the variegated version of it though. And that is actually the Hoya Weyetii. So once again, you guys have seen my variegated version of this plant, but there is a solid green version of this plant and look at it. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the elongated shapes of the leaves on the way at the eye. I love how it looks when they get nice and big and full like this. And once again, an excellent trailing plant if you're looking for a trailing plant and kind of similar to the Senecios, they don't grow like larger, super fast. They don't have to be repotted very frequently. So another good one, if you're looking for a plant that's gonna be easy to keep contained at a certain size, and that kind of goes for most Hoyas, honestly. But the next one I wanna look at is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. I do own the solid green version that you're seeing here of this plant. I do also own the variegated version now, but I absolutely love the look of this plant. This is another plant that has like an excellent kind of textural look to it, because as you can see here, when they get larger and more mature and they start to you know, hang down. It has kind of this like crinkly leafed rope like look to it that I think is absolutely beautiful. And if you are lucky, you will get beautiful flowers on this plant one day as well. But the other Hoya that I want to talk about, and I just can't, I can't get enough of this plant and that is the Hoya linearis. And so here's mine that you're seeing. And this has been a relatively fast growing Hoya for me. It is definitely a smaller, finer leafed Hoya. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It actually kind of gives me like, I don't know, Hold on, I'm looking at it. Sometimes I gotta look at plants when I'm trying to explain things to you guys. I don't know, there's something that's kind of like sea life-like to me. Like something about it almost reminds me of like seaweed. Anybody else out there get it? Am I just crazy? Comment down below if you understand where I'm coming from here. But I just love the look of it. It is just so linear, first of all, probably why it's called the linearis. But it is just beautiful, beautiful plant. I think it is another one of those plants and, and it's a trailing plant that I think meets this requirement or not requirement. I just feel like it's another one of those plants that lends itself well to a modern home. And especially if you're looking for a plant that lends itself well to a modern aesthetic that trails, I think this is a great, great option. Now, the next plant I would talk about, I actually don't own this plant. I have kind of had it on my radar for a while, but you know, I've got a lot of peperomias already and I don't really need another one right now, but I do think this is a beautiful plant. Every time I look at it, I like stop and stare. So this is what is known as the raindrop peperomia. So this is, as you can see, a beautiful all green peperomia and these leaves have this beautiful kind of raindrop shape to them and they are slightly cupped. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the alocasia tiny dancer just in, you know, a peperomia form right? So same basic care requirements as most of your peperomias, but a beautiful solid green option. And there is something about this that kind of reminds me a little bit of the Pilea peperomioides, I believe is how it's pronounced. You guys who have been here for a while probably know I am not a huge fan of that plant, but if you like the look of that plant and you don't want to have the problems that happen as it grows out and gets older and gets crazy lanky and out of control, this is an excellent alternative that kind of has that same look that is also solid green if you're looking for something like that. But let's wrap up with some philodendrons. And there is a philodendron that I came across not too long ago that is solid green that I just thought was super cute. And it is called philodendron mia. And so as you can he see here, we are a solid green plant. This is a upright philodendron. So a self-heading philodendron, which means it's gonna stay relatively small, but it will get relatively wide. I will flash up on screen for you if I can find it what the mature width for this plant is, but definitely a beautiful all green philodendron. I like the slightly different shape to these leaves from some of the other upright philodendron. So definitely a great option, especially if you're looking for an upright philodendron. Now, this next one, I was going back and forth on whether I should put it on this list or not, because I'm like, does it really meet my requirements of solid green? Maybe, I don't know. Part of me was saying no because it has an iridescent leaf and I was like, well, it's not variegated, but you know, if I wasn't even gonna include like white veining, you know, plants that had white veining on the leaves, 
I don't know if I could include this one, but I decided to include it anyway because it's hands down one of my favorite philodendrons and it is so beautiful. And of course it is the philodendron micans. And these leaves actually are solid green, you guys. They do have a bit of a coppery tone when they first come in, but as you can see, they are slightly iridescent. They've got kind of that sheen to them. So I know maybe that's a little bit different than everything we've been looking at, but it's so beautiful and I think it's great. It's a darker green than some of these other plants. I mean, I just, I could not include it. I couldn't. It is definitely a great option for a solid green plant. And if you want a trailing plant, you can let it trail like I do. If you want to let it grow up a pole, you can also do that, but just a beautiful, beautiful, stunning plant. But I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me today and taking a look at these gorgeous solid green unvariegated plants. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And if you are not a fan of solid green plants, if you are all about the variegated plants, I am going to be working on an upcoming video for you guys on my favorite variegated plants as well. So if you're watching this and that video is already available, you'll be able to check that out right here next. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!